So to start this afternoon, we have Alan Lewis, the Director of Food and Agricultural Policy at Natural Grocers, who will share the story of activism and business in a recent venture at the retail level. Thank you, and thanks for everyone uh, for being here today. This is, um, this is the first few slides and a little adjustment to a TED Talk that I did in September. And we're, our theme here today is harmony, and sometimes to get to harmony, you have to go through a little bit of disharmony. So, 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 so bear with me here. So this is, um, this is a homepage, or a, a web page from a really popular national yogurt company. And you might think that your favorite yogurt comes from a beautiful, sunny, green place like that. And most of you know in this room, if you're at Expo, that that's probably not true. And this is what a dairy looks like. And those cows will spend most of their adult lives inside a barn, often confined. They might have access to the outside in a dry lot without vegetation. And this is a typical American industrial dairy, you might say, honorable, hardworking farm family, making ends meet and delivering a lot of milk into the marketplace. The problem is that those cows tend to have a three to four year uh, lifespan because they get sick in these conditions and they are treated with a lot of antibiotics, anti-inflammatories and other vet drugs. And at a break-even point where the cost of the medication and keeping those cows productive if it exceeds the value of their milk, then the dairy farmer sends the cow off to the slaughterhouse to be turned into this. And the problem is, okay, how did we end up uh, feeding sick cows to our kids. This bothered natural grocers and we wanted to look at a different system and we researched uh, pastured dairies, talked to a lot of dairymen across the country. Excuse me, is there a, a neutral for dairy women, dairy men, dairy people across the country? <laughs> um, and really uh, got deep into the organic standards and 100% grass-fed standards, worked with Carrie Balcom at AGA. So we decided actually last year in the fall that we would commit to only carrying dairy products that were made from milk from non-confinement grass-fed dairies. Um, as you can imagine, this is a huge shift. It's a huge challenge, especially when you set a standard and those cows have to jump over that moon. It's not like we've got a set of standards and anyone will do. So we went to our uh, national, the bigger yogurt, we went to all of our yogurt companies and we asked them some basic questions to figure out where their milk was coming from. Where are your cows right now? What are they eating? Where are your pastures? And um, as you probably know, a lot of the natural dairy products in the country are made from industrial milk that you pick up the phone and you say, give me three loads and 100 and 20,000 pounds of milk shows up and you don't really care how it was raised or where it came from. So we took this step, all right, in my TED talk I showed you those brands and uh, you'd be really surprised, they're off the shelf. Um, and, 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 and we put brands like this in, Maple Hill, Strauss, um, Dreaming Cow, and, and Tim Joseph from Maple Hill did a great presentation yesterday, went through all of the issues with, with raising cows on grass and the quality of the milk. So now we have big companies that are doing really well, but they're not in our stores, but we have these smaller companies who can bring in more pasture to their co-op or to their system, bring more farmers into their system, using intense pastured grazing methods, sequestering carbon in the soil, regenerating the soil and the grass with the manure. And you have pretty darn happy cows because they're spending a great deal of time out on the pastures um, eating, uh, guess what, eating, eating grass. It's kind of revolutionary. I'm gonna break every rule in PowerPoint slides and show you this list of things because the real harmony comes at the consumer level where the customers are in the store and they have a whole new set of choices that they're not familiar with. And they're a little bit more expensive. But all of these things start to take place and the consumer knows that they're spending a little bit more per serving. 
And let's be honest, sometimes quite a bit more for serving if it's a really an artisanal grass-fed yogurt. But the price, the additional price, they know what they're paying for. Family farms, reducing antibiotic resistance, improving water, sequestering carbon, creating rural communities that have a lot of longevity, sustainability, um, and, and, uh, and life in them. Uh, that's our nexus. That's what we think the harmony is. Uh, this is the slide that'll get me in trouble and, and take it in chung and cheek because it's not, it shouldn't be revolutionary to have dairy cows on dairy pasture e eating grass. Thank you. <laughs>